Today we're going to talk about the ABCs and the alphabet with, this is Lachlan over here and here's Nash, and they are technically in 4K, um, but because we homeschool, we just don't really put them in like a category, I guess, until like kindergarten. Um, Declan right here is in first grade and he also is going to learn some of the alphabet and the ABCs today too. I'm going to go over some of the um, fun ways that you can teach your children the alphabet. I have 12 different things that you can use to teach them. Some of them are fun, some of them are more learning. Okay, so I'm going to go through this one first. And this is the alphabet memory matching. And this, they can work on their own if they need to, or they can work on it with another person, or me, or one of their other brothers, they can work on it. And in here, they have the uppercase and lowercase, so that you would have X. And then the picture would be the same, so when they matched it, they would be able to find it. And you don't have to do the whole alphabet all at one time. You can set it up if you just want them to learn, you know, maybe five for, you know, the first couple days or whatever. Then you would just do five matching. And then you could eventually build up to do the whole box or the whole alphabet. So that's that. That's one of them. Another way of learning is with dry erase boards. I think I got this at Walmart. It is well used. I need to clean it a little bit better. Um, and then they can trace the uppercase and lowercase letters on here. And then they just race it and then do it over. So that's another good learning thing that they can do on their own or with their brothers or with me that they can practice the ABCs. So that's another fun way. Um, here's another, oh, here's another, okay. This one is just more of like a reference for them to look at and it is from Teaching and Learning Company. What you can do with this is just leave it at their table, make it into a placemat, you can uh, laminate it that they would have so it doesn't get ruined. Ours is kind of wrinkly because it was in one of the kids um, little cubby area. So that's another thing that they can look at or you can use little marker things here and say which one is N or which one is M and they can um, mark it off on here also. That's another good way of teaching them. I think it was like two years ago I printed off um, these and I laminated them. And it is from Worksheet Fun. So if you want to go over there and print off yours and have yours laminated, I think you can go to like Office Max and have them laminated also. And with these, how you can use these are, it comes with little... Um, I have the lowercase in one bag, uppercase in another. So if they want to do independent work and they want to do this on their own, they would take the lowercase letters and match it to the lowercase on here. Kind of like a bingo, it's just not really the same, you know, not really a game. So if you have lowercase j, you would want them to match that. Or if you want to make it a little harder, you would take the uppercase letter, so I'll get the first one out, you would get the uppercase letter and put it with the lowercase letter. So you would have uppercase F with lowercase F and they would have to put that on there. This is a good one and these I printed off, she has other things on her website too that are for maybe even a little bit younger than these guys. It has a lot of matching pictures for more of a visual comprehension thing. So you can look up that and I'll leave this in the description down below also. In one of my other videos, I made a video on this 
um, product. It is a magnet letter and numbers. So this is what it looks like. I got that on Amazon. And what, yeah, it comes with the eraser and a dry erase. And around the border, it has numbers and ABCs around the border they can look at. But it, yep, and it's a magnet thing also. So if they want, they can pull out their letters. They have uppercase and lowercase, and it's labeled in here inside what letter it is and what one they can pull out. And then when you take it out, they can put uppercase B and lowercase B. So if they want to work on that too. This is something they can work on by themselves. It's not everything has to be taught by, by a teacher when they're younger. A lot of it they can just be doing stuff just to keep them busy. And this is another good way of doing that. So, that's another dry erase. Dry erase is always something fun for the kids to do. Um, another thing that I like to pull out is this. CD by Preschool Prep. I have the whole um, program, if you want to say program, curriculum. It was, I think, around $100 for the whole Preschool Prep, and it comes with letters, numbers, shapes, sight words, and colors. And this one is just very repetitive with their letters, fun for the kids, and it's ages nine to five, nine months to five years. So you can start this out pretty young for them to kind of pick up on their letters when they're little. So that's another fun one. Or, you know, if you're working with some of your older kids with their homeschool curriculum, you could put this on for the little kids. Now, this one is... Um, I got from the Dollar Tree, and I ended up getting, like, hold on one second. I got a little bag, and then we just put this in there. We also put the matching um, laminated papers in there. So when we need it quick, we just put it in there and pull it out quick, and then that's what we work on. So what I was saying is... What they can do is like Lachlan can go through this puzzle and say A, you can put it down, B, C, D, D, and E, right? And then Lock Nash over here can put it back together. So he would say A, B, So he can come along and he can put them all back in order. Okay. okay. So that's another way to work on the puzzle. And then you can have a brother if you want. One brother can help another brother. So or Declan over here can say, hey, Hey, uh, Lachlan, what letter is this? Or what letter is this? Oh. What letter is this one? I don't know. T. T. So that's another thing that they can do. Mom doesn't always have to do homeschool with them. You can have brothers help with that. Now, if you want to, what, what we do is we strictly stick to like a curriculum through the week. And that's mainly their workbooks. And these I got at the dollar store. And on the back it has alphabet tic-tac-toe. So we can get the, cut that out when they're finished with this book and they can work on that also. And yep. And then, okay. and then um, they also have more stuff if you want to go to this website. And I'll try to remember to leave that link down below. Um, and in here, when you open up the page... They have the uppercase letter and the lowercase letters that they can refer back to in the book. And then the first one is uppercase letters and a picture with that letter. And then they have to continue on and write uppercase letters and lowercase letters. So I'm not sure which book this one is, but this is what they worked on so far. So here's some of those things. All right, so 
that's that book. So this would be um, stuff that I would sit down with them and work with. And then I also bought extra books because they're only a dollar at the dollar store. And some of them I'll just pull out and they can work on them by themselves. I'm not requiring them to um, tell me the letters at that time, but only when I sit down with them and work on them. Um, so what I was wanting to say to you is, okay. I'm missing, Hudson, you want to get me the ABC flashcards right behind the curtain there? And the flashcard one? Right there. That's the all the flashcards. Now, if you guys want to do strictly curriculum, strictly curriculum through the week and then you want to have a lot of fun during or on like a special day that you have more time to do so let's say a Friday would be our best day that we take a little bit less time on school and we do more crafts and stuff that's when you can pull out the game so this is go fish uh, alphabet and in here you would have the uppercase and lowercase and they would have to match that you know, with the regular game, Go Fish. Or you can start out small again, like the other thing that I was showing you with matching is you could start out with A through H, lay them down, and then they would have to flip them over and try to find them through a matching game. So you don't have to just strictly use it for Go Fish. That's another way to make schooling fun. Not everything has to be curriculum-based when you're teaching the little ones. It can be all... Um, fun learning experience. Sometimes they think that by playing the games that they're actually having fun versus um, learning. Here's another thing that I use and I work with is little stick on the back. You just peel it off and then you stick it down. If you can kind of see down here, Declan has it in front of his spot. So does Nash and Lachlan on their table spot and Miles also that we just stick these down on the table. You can make these probably into like a, um, like a table placemat and then laminate it so that they don't get ruined. Because sometimes with us cleaning off our table, they kind of get a little worn. But these are perfect. You could put these maybe in their bedroom or wherever that you would have a spot for them. Or if you have a notebook that you're working in, you could stick that on the front of their notebook so that they can look back at their letters. And these, I think I got at the dollar store, but I will look into it and um, give you guys a better idea on that, okay? Um, another thing that you can do on a Friday or one of your less busy days are alphabet bingo. So in here, you would pass out these cards. And any child can pick whatever one they want. And if I say, do you have an F? They will look on their card and they would see if they have an F and they would put their place mark down. If they, if you want to make it, this one a little harder, you don't show them. You, you just say, you kind of hide it and you say, do you have an F? And they have to try to find it without you. You know, if you're just starting to know, they can see what the picture is. That, that helps them. You don't always have to make it hard for them or a struggle to teach them. So you can kind of make it fun and easy at first, and then when they start really recognizing their letters, then you want to hide it and see if they can find it. Then you can do treats after if they get it right, right? Yeah. <laughs> we said we were going to do, we're going to do this one tomorrow, right? Yeah. Okay. If you guys are looking for books um, on Alphabet, I do have another one somewhere in the house, and I will find it, and then I will, is that it underneath there? Well, look. See that purple thing underneath there? Go. Oh, and then you know what you can get me is the alphabet puzzle. Okay. While they look for that, I'm going to talk about this. Perfect. I don't need the number one. I don't need the number one. We're talking about the ABCs. Okay, I found some more stuff. Or they found some more stuff for me to let you guys know. So there is many, many references. Even the library carries so many different things to teach your children ABCs. Um, another fun way was Declan, we got him a t-shirt that had the alphabet on it, and then D was highlighted for Declan. So you can order them t-shirts, and if I remember that also, I will leave that link down below. I don't know the exact one that we ordered for him, but I'll, um, I'll figure that out. So that's fun for them to keep on them and learn. 
Um, when my, I'll get back to this in a minute, but when my kids were little, we would have color of the day. So everybody would have to dress in yellow or red or whatever color it was that day or that week. And that made it fun for the little ones. And they kind of just pick up easier when it's fun. Um, with letters, you could do maybe like once or twice a week. You could say, okay, well, if the letter is B that week and you're studying B, you could do like burritos or what else is a B word that you could eat? Can you guys think of a B word that you could eat? Spaghetti. No, that was S. That's what I said for S. I tricked you. I changed it this time. Um, uh, B. Bananas. Bananas. So one of the snacks could be B for banana. So if you want to tie in food items and stuff for your uh, homeschool day, that would be fun too. Okay. So with Declan, when he was two and a half, we found out that he had a speech issue called apraxia. I think it's announced, pronounced apraxia. It's where the brain and their mouth don't kind of work together. But I am going to do a video on speech. Um, I'm not going to do like speech therapy or anything like that, but I'm going to give you our experience with Declan and his speech issue that we had and how we corrected it. So that'll be a fun one. Um, but this is one of the books that when I was looking into it, this was kind of like a reference book that is really good for kids that have speech issues because it teaches them um, the ABCs, but it also is repetitive. So it's called Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And each page, okay, oops. Okay, so I'll feed you, oh, find the page that we are doing. It says, we said D to EFG, I'll beat you up the top of the coconut tree. Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. Okay, the coconut tree. And then it says, and Q R S and T U V still more W X Y and Z the whole alphabet up the oh no chicka chicka boom boom they all fall down so this is a fun one for the kids because it has chicka chicka boom boom in it so that was a, I think I got that on Amazon uh, this I found at, yeah, you can look at that. This I found at one of our local um, kids stores that is like used um, clothing and kids stuff, toys. Um, and I go in there every once in a while, maybe like once or twice a year. And I always like to find like very unique different toys for my kids to play with. And this is one of the ones that I found. And <laughs> everybody knows this is my puzzle, right? This is like my puzzle. You don't really play with this puzzle. This is our homeschool puzzle. And the reason why I like it is because it's in a case. And you just um, open it up. And they, all the letters click inside. So what I was showing with the other puzzle, you can one kid can, here I can't even get it out, pop it out. So you would say, what letter is this one? Come on. Do you know? D. Yep, D. D. So one kid could pull them all out, and then the next kid could put them all back in, and then they have to say D. Okay? So I just like it because it's all in one area. There's not a lot of pieces. It's just very basic. Um, and a lot of, like I said, a lot of kids know that they can't play with this unless they, like, kind of ask me. And down below here, it's not magnetic. But they're able to spell simple words down here. So you could spell cat. How do you spell cat? Do you remember? C. C. A. T. 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 It's right there. Wait, I forgot. Okay. Well, we're not going to do it now, but I was just saying so they know if they want to look into this. So this one is kind of just laying around and they can look at it. But they have to ask first because this is my favorite one. Uh, this book I found at the store. I think it was like festival. They always have like a book uh, area that you can um, 
purchase and then they have them at certain prices. And I'm always looking for new ways to teach my kids um, for our schooling days. So it's very textured. So they're able to, I'll show you the first page. A is for ant, munching lunch as it goes. And they can go along and they can feel this. And that kind of just gives them a minute to stop and think and say, oh, we're talking about A today, right? We're talking about ant. Ant. So, so each page is has um, the texture to it. I'll bring it up close for you guys. You can kind of see the texture in it kind of bumpy so then you can read that to your kids so that's a fun way of learning um, and not just all curriculum it's more when they're going to bed you don't always have to you know teach them during the day you can pull this out at bedtime and uh, teach them then another thing that I really like using and this is the last thing that I'm going to show you guys today and they're going to show you okay they're gonna show you an example of what to do with this. I have two different ones. One is from Confessions of a Homeschooler, and the other one is the MeasuredMom.com, mm -hmm. and I'll put that down below too, okay? So here is that, so Y is for yarn, and they need to go and find all the Ys in the circle. And then in this is a story. So we read the story. W is for watermelon. Wendy waits for watermelon while the weather is warm. You would read that to them, and then they would have to find all the W's. And what we use for that, so I'm going to give the kids, just give them one. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give that to you, okay? And you're going to work on the ones that I'm going to show you. So we got Y. W and here, W. Oh, here's another one. This one is a little bit harder. It doesn't have it circled, so it gives them a little bit more of a challenge for them to have to find the letter. I think I find that with the circles around it, it gives them a little bit more of a visual of it. So these two, these guys are going to work on these. They're going to show you how to go about doing it. I got these on wall, on Amazon. They are the dab and dot markers. These work really fun and it makes learning a lot of fun to using markers and stuff like that. Um, and so like pencils and pens and crayons, this just gives them a little bit um, more color to their homework. So did yeah. I give you yellow yeah. last time? You know what you know what yellow starts with? What is it? No, it starts with why like your paper. No, I don't want to do it. So no. Okay. So you're going to get a green one, and you're going to get the red one. And they're going to show you, they're going to show you how to work on, yep. So let's start with the circle one first. Okay. Now, uh, yep, you're going to do W, he's going to do Y, and he's going to do, which letter is this? W. You have W. You're in a W too. Um, if you guys can tell that Nash and Lachlan are still learning with um, like when to take turns and when to listen. So we're still learning on that. Um, but that's all part of doing school is to be patient. Right guys? Yes. Okay. You can do that one, sure, but I think they really want you to do the ones that are in the circle. And when you order these uh, dab and dot markers, you will get, uh, I think if you go on their website or when you order it, they'll send you a separate email that they have other activities that they can work on. Oh, what do it say? Okay, it says, W is for watermelon. Wendy waits for watermelon while the weather is warm. <laughs> Mama, I'm doing this. Okay. So they're, while they work on that, um, I'll just talk with you guys for a little bit. They're going to finish up. This is just going to be uh, one video that I'm going to start with, with for our kind of our homeschool series on teaching the kids. Um, I'll start with the little ones and work our way up all the way to Gage, which is a freshman. And then I will 
um, do another separate video on Declan's speech and how we overcame that. And some of the things that we're still going through with that, not speech necessarily, but more um, like yeah. comprehension and learning with that. Okay, and then I'm also going to be doing um, subjects and stuff and individual subjects or um, maybe some of the um, reference or not references, but um, what's it called? Like other curriculum or sites that you can go to to get started. Some of the guidelines to homeschooling, how to get your child registered. I know we already started school. Um, so the year is already like taken off, but this is stuff that you can maybe start collecting before you start next year. And next year, maybe I'll do a refresher on what we're going to do next year because then they'll be in kindergarten and then I can go over what we're going to do for kindergarten next year for these guys. And that'll be fun because that's going to be a whole nother, um, getting curriculum and I'll do like what I purchased for them for kindergarten. And otherwise, if you guys want to message me at 10 kids in a garage, 10 kids in a garage at gmail.com. And I'll leave, that's all in my description also on all that. You can email me and I can say, I hope you guys get started with homeschool. Or if you just want to get stuff for your grandkids or your kids just need something extra to work on. This would be like a Christmas idea too. Um, especially the dab and dot markers are always fun to play with. Um, some of the other stuff I want to point out would be like where I got the curriculum for the kids this year. I did do a series, part one, two, and three, on kind of what I was doing for each child this year. But now I kind of want to break it down for you guys and say this is the math that we're using for each one of our children. It might be different, but I want to go over that and I want to go over some of the ways to maybe help you guys out with some extra learning ideas for um, individual subjects. Um, so that'll come out later. This is just going to be the start video of what I really want to focus on with homeschooling for our videos. I don't, I didn't want it to just be like, oh, this is what my kids are working on, and you guys think it like the main idea of how to help your child out or get ideas on what to do. So if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our other homeschool videos that are going to be coming out soon. And don't forget to subscribe and share our videos because that helps me know that you guys are enjoying our videos and that'll help other families that are getting started with homeschool or just other maybe fun ideas to tie in for the alphabet with your children. So other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Yes!